Every now and again, Excel comes up with some game-changing new updates, and today is one of those days. I am here to show you two awesome new functions, Group By and Pivot By, which essentially emulate pivot tables, but in some cases, they can go even further. So here, we have a regular pivot table, which has city, sales, and clients, and in this one on the right, I have done the same thing using a function called Group By. And where it goes even further is I can even get a list in text values of things that are associated with it. My name is David and I'm going to have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tickle the Workplace, I'm covering it on my channel. And I love talking about the new stuff. This feature got released literally today. So let's get stuck in. So here I have my data, city, singer, sponsor, country, sales, and clients. I'm going to use this new function equals group by. Now you have a lot of inputs here, but square brackets ones are optional. And we're gonna start off without the optional ones. So row field, city, comma, values, we're just gonna do sales, comma, and then function here, you can actually choose whichever one you want. So I'm going to do a sum, and then I'm going to close my brackets because the others are all optional. And there you go. Now you have your thing, the same as this one. Now let's do a little bit more with some of the optional ones. So over here, I'm going to do field headers, yes and show. That's usually what I would do. And then total, you can have whether you do subtotals or not. And then you can have sort orders as well. So uh, if I just do this one, I just get the header there. And let's say that I want to do multiple columns. So I want to say, I want this one and I want to do with Singer as well. And then I want to say in total depth, I want grand and subtotals, but I want to sort that by which number, number one, number two, or number three. I'm gonna sort it by column number three, and I don't wanna do any filters, so there we go. Now I have my subtotals, and it's sorted at each level, low, high, low, higher, highest, etc., etc. So this is essentially what you can do with it. Uh, it's fairly easy to use, I would even say. So this kind of worked with these two fields because they are adjacent. But what about if we want to use non-adjacent fields? So that is still doable. Uh, first, let me show you a function I love called hstack. So hstack can take a can take a column and stack that next to another column like this, creating the results in this matrix. There's also vstack. Vstack I probably use even more than hstack but we're gonna use this in the function. So I'm going to start with group by, and I've got this one, and then I'm going to press a comma, and then I have my values. Let's do, I can do both of them. I can also do an H stack if they're not next to each other, and I'm going to do a percentage of. So another type of aggregation, really, really nice. Uh, remember to change these into percent, control shift five will do that. Perfect. So now I am looking at it first by country and then by city, and I'm doing percentages at each stage. Uh, I always probably recommend using your field headers. Yes, and show number three. And now it will show you what it's doing. All right, ready for something you can't do with the regular pivot tables? Equals group by, and I can say city, and I can say a comma, and I can say values, and I'm gonna do sponsor. And now you have text aggregations, in particular array to text. In cat, I don't really see the point of it. Uh, that will do it without any spaces, but array to text will do it with spaces and with comma separated values. So in London, we had Pepsi, BP, Primark, and Citra. And to show you that, I add my filters, Control Shift L, and I go to London, you get those that appear here. So really, really nice. You probably don't want a total here. So you probably want to do, you can press a comment, skip that one. You can probably press zero and no total. And that is absolutely brilliant. It's impossible to do that with a pivot table in Excel. You can do it with power pivots using concatenate X functions, but that is really advanced or with a couple of other combinations of functions. But this is so much easier like this. All right, so what about if we wanna do something the other way around? 
So with pivot tables, as you know, you have rows and columns. So I could very easily do this into columns and then I could have this kind of matrix. Well, Excel has also introduced pivot by. Pivot by is the equivalent of being able to do things in rows and in columns. So I could say, for example, my row fields are that color, my column fields are this one, comma, and then my values fields are gonna be the sales columns. And then my function, I can say a median. A median is something you also can't do with regular pivot tables in Excel, which is really nice. So that's all pretty well and nice. Uh, and you have other things like, yeah, field headers, then you have row total depth, whether you have subtotals in the rows, subtotals in the columns, sort order for rows, sort order for columns, etc. Uh, you do have your filter array. Filter array is essentially the same as putting something in the filter. So, uh, for example, over here, I could have said comma filter array, and I could have said this one equals in speech marks France. And then I'm getting rid of the London ones because that's not in France. So I probably wouldn't use that so much. I would use filters in another way. Kind of like I don't really use the filters field here, but that is worth knowing about still. Another great advantage over pivot tables is that they do update automatically. So if I decide that this one's not going to be Paris, this is going to be Cannes in France, then suddenly I have a new thing for Cannes and that also appears here. But this one hasn't updated. I need to right click and refresh, which is tedious because in the age of AI, stuff should be refreshing automatically. So let's say I want to say who are the singers by city. So I could do equals group by like before, and I can say my row fields is the cities, and my singers are the values, and my functions is a rate text. I can double click it or select it and press tab. Close my brackets and I get this. The top ones look fine, but once I get to here, I get Dua Lipa twice, and Paris has got Tay Tay twice, which isn't great. I love using the abbreviations in this content. <laughs> so um, this one, the function is actually a way that Excel is helping us with a feature called Lambda. So Lambda is a way to define your own function. You can actually write functions that are not in this list, and I'm going to do my own one with Lambda. So I can redo the exact same one by pressing my parameters, my first one, and then my calculation is going to be array to text, and then that's going to be of x. I close my brackets all the times I need to, and I get the same thing. But because this is a lambda, I can also go a little bit further. So I can also go here and I can say unique. Say new-ish function as well. And this will only give me the unique values, which is what I want. I can go even further and I can say sort. So I want them sorted from A to Z as well. By the way, if you don't want to learn and understand this complex thing, just learn this off by heart. <laughs> lambda X array to text sort unique X. That's really, really good. Another way they could work is if I wanted to do a count. So I could do equals group by, and then I'm going to do the row fields, and then I'm going to do the values to be, it doesn't matter because I'm just going to do a count, and then I'm going to do a count at, this is going to tell me that I have four in Paris, but I have only three, so this is not doing unique. If I wanted to do a distinct count, I would do the same thing. Something that is also almost impossible to do with pivot tables. So lambda x comma, and then count r of unique x. Like that. And now I have the same things that appear there. So this is how you could use it. Um, oh, by the way, in making this video, I did also find something else. If in the sort order you do a positive number, it sorts ascending, lowest to highest. But if you do a negative number, it does the opposite. It sorts highest to lowest. Usually I would probably do highest to lowest for numbers. But yeah, that's something that I figured out <laughs> in making this video. This is brand new, as I said, so I'm just figuring stuff out as I go along. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. My name is David Benheim, and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. I love talking about the new stuff. This is brand, brand new. At the moment, it's only available to the beta channel. If you go to file and account, then 
you can see here whether you've got the beta channel. Uh, it will be available to all versions of Microsoft 365 very, very soon uh, for Mac and for Windows. Thanks for watching.